We showed before how a price increase lowers demand through two separate effects. First, there's a substitution effect, which is the change in quantity demanded when a goods price changes, holding income constant. Second is the income effect, which is a change in quantity demanded because of a change in income, holding prices constant. So the price of Coke goes up. The substitution effect means you shift to other sodas. The income effect means that because the price went up, you feel effectively poorer. So you'll reassess what you can and can't afford and decide whether to buy more or less Coke. Let's think of this graphically using a concrete example. Here's a familiar graph with a budget constraint and an indifference curve. The horizontal axis shows how much pizza you're eating. The vertical axis shows how many cookies you're eating. Let's say your income is $10 and both goods cost $1 each. Let's say you're consuming five units of each good. So five slices of pizza on the horizontal axis and five cookies on the vertical axis put you right here at point A. Note that this is the highest indifference curve you can achieve while still staying within your budget. That's from a few lectures ago. You always want to maximize utility given your budget constraint. Now what happens if the price of pizza jumps to $2 per slice? Your budget constraint rotates inward. Before, if you spent all your money on pizza, you could get 10 slices. Now your budget only gets you 5 slices at most. And as we see, you move to a new bundle, point C at a lower indifference curve. Now you're consuming three slices of pizza. This shows how when the price goes up, quantity demanded of pizza goes down. That's the law of demand we discussed earlier. But that captures both the income and substitution effect, and we want to separate these out. We can decompose these effects in two steps. First, what happens if you change prices but keep utility constant? This gets at the substitution effect which is about the change in price of a good, but not the change in income. To see this substitution effect, draw an imaginary budget constraint that meets two conditions. It's parallel to the new budget constraint, so it reflects the new higher price of pizza, and it's tangent to the original difference curve, so you're keeping utility constant. See that for this new imaginary budget constraint, consumption of pizzas falls from point A to point B, or from five slices of pizza to four slices, and cookies go from five to six. This is a universal feature of demand. It is always true that substitution effects are negative. No matter what, if the price of a good increases, this causes you to substitute away from it if you hold utility constant. So we've now illustrated the substitution effect and proven why it's always in the same direction. What about the income effect? The movement from point A to point B is the substitution effect. So the rest of the movement from B to C has to be the income effect. And this makes sense. The income effect is about what happens if you change income while keeping prices the same. Now look at the movement from point B to point C. Here you're keeping prices constant because you're moving from the imaginary budget constraint to the final real budget constraint and they have the same slope. Since they have the same slope, that means the relative prices are identical. The only change is that the budget constraint, while maintaining the same slope, has shifted inward. That's equivalent to a drop in income while keeping relative prices constant, which is another way of stating the income effect. From point B to point C, you drop from four slices of pizza to three slices of pizza. So the total effect of the price change is the sum of the substitution effect and income effect. 1 plus 1 equals 2. In this example, the income and substitution effects went in the same direction. The pizza was pricier, so you substituted away from it. But the price change also made you feel poorer, and that also caused you to buy less pizza. That means pizza is a normal good on this graph. But remember that the income effect can go in either direction. If the good in question is an inferior good, then the income effect will cause an increase in consumption of the good when the price rises. Here's another graph like the one you just saw, but where pizza is an inferior good. The price of pizza rises and you move from A and end up at C. But let's decompose the two effects again. First, draw an imaginary budget constraint where utility is constant, but at the new price of pizza. This puts you at B. As expected, the substitution effect means that as pizza gets more expensive, you consume less. 
but the income effect is the movement from B to C, and that shows an increase in the consumption of pizza. This would therefore be an example of pizza as an inferior good. The substitution effect caused you to consume less, but the income effect went in the opposite direction. You felt effectively poorer, so you consume more pizza. In theory, an income effect could more than offset a substitution effect. You could actually get demand rising as prices rise. This is what we call a Giffen good. Remember, this would not arise because the substitution effect is ever wrong signed, but rather because with inferior goods, the income effect could more than offset the substitution effect.